Swinburne University of Technology. Hi everyone. In this video we're going to be talking about ethics. So if you are involved with market research, uh, there is an Australian Market and Social Research Society and they have a code of professional behaviour which lay, uh, lays down a lot of uh, responsibilities about what a researcher should and shouldn't be doing with regards to ethics. If you are doing any kind of survey research, in addition to being aware of this code, it's also very important to be aware of legislation. So things like no call lists. If someone has their phone number on a no call list, then there's particular kinds of research that you can still ring them about and particular kinds of research that you cannot. If you do call someone that's on a no call list uh, and they complain, then this can be quite problematic and potentially expensive for your company. So it's very important to be aware of these kinds of rules. In addition, universities are also governed by a Australian code of responsible conduct of research. And so this lays out uh, research ethics rules uh, with regards to human participants. And so pretty much any time we're going to be doing surveying, uh, we're going to be having human participants. This will potentially be very relevant for those of you that go on to do any kind of honours or master's degree, where you may be doing your own research and going out and surveying people or interviewing people. So normally there will be an ethics committee, uh, there will be a set of policies and uh, paperwork for you to complete. And so you complete an ethics application explaining what kind of research you're doing and what kind of ethics safeguards you're putting in place and this will get reviewed by an ethics committee and if they're happy with what you have said then you'll get the go-ahead to be able to do your research. For this course uh, we're not going to be having any human participants uh, but I think it's something that is very important for you to be aware of. So both codes of ethics have a number of different uh, common components to them and I'm just going to talk about a few of these because they are important to be aware of if we are going to be surveying people. So the first one is voluntary participation. So anytime we're doing any kind of research uh, we should be inviting participants but making them fully aware that it is completely voluntary. So under both codes it's not acceptable for you to try and coerce or pro provide any duress on people to participate in your research. Uh, if it's in a survey or an interview, uh, people should be able to terminate it at any stage. If they decide that they're unhappy, they don't want to continue, maybe they don't like your questions. Every so often uh, you will come across research which you may feel is um, breaching this, this voluntary participation. Uh, particularly when you see workplace research uh, where you, you may be receiving pressure from a boss. Um, so this is the kind of thing that should be avoided. So the next one, again, hopefully kind of common sense, you shouldn't be harming your respondents. So this is the first one, personal injury is probably less applicable to surveying. It's probably more if you're thinking about clinical trials. Uh, perhaps you are a osteopath or a physiotherapist and you're doing some research on different techniques, uh, you need to make sure that you're not actually going to hurt people. Uh, but if you're doing social research and some market research, uh, you, there is potential to embarrass people, to ask them questions that uh, might upset them or embarrass them. And we want to try and avoid that as much as possible. When ethics committees uh, consider, an, consider an application, particularly from areas like psychology where they do talk about uh, sometimes quite serious or quite embarrassing uh, things, the committees will weigh up the discomfort that a participant may, may face versus the value of the research. And it's normally quite a high benchmark. So you need to really, uh, for any university-based research, demonstrate how important the research it is. And not only that, but if you are providing discomfort, whether it is physical uh, or emotional, that you also have avenues for providing help to people. So perhaps you're asking uh, questions about depression and anxiety. Uh, it would be very important that you were also providing information about counselling services. So if someone got upset by the survey or the interview, 
where could they go to find help? Two terms that uh, we'll see quite often with regards to ethics are the terms an anonymity and confidentiality. So if a survey is anonymous, then you cannot identify the respondents. Uh, for some surveying, this is going to be quite easy for us to do. We might set up a web survey and we won't know who has completed. We won't know who these people are. And so that would be something that we could promise to our participants in advance. You will be anonymous. We won't know who you are. This is not always the case though. It could be that if we're asking particular information about people, we will perhaps by deduction be able to identify who they are. Sometimes we might even ask them for contact details because perhaps we want to follow the survey up with a personal interview or a focus group or something like that. In this case, we wouldn't be able to promise the person that their data will be anonymous, but we will be able to say that it's confidential. So we won't be sharing their identity with anyone else. Uh, in terms of good practice in our data files, we would go through, we would replace the identifiers with ID numbers. So we'd have two separate files, one with information about who the people are and one with their responses. And so maybe one or two of the senior people will be able to match up who these people are, but anyone else that came across the data set would not be able to link a person's answers to who they are. We shouldn't be deceiving our subjects. So people, when they are volunteering, so their vol voluntary participation, they've volunteered to be a participant in our research, they should be made fully aware of what they're in for. So we should be saying, you will do a half hour survey, or maybe we would like to interview you once a week for four weeks, or maybe we would like to conduct some sort of um, physiotherapy techniques on your arms to see the effect of them. So we should be making it very clear what is going to happen to the person. Every so often there might be research where we might need to argue that the, the, there is a, a slight deception that we're going to use. So we might want to try and find out some information, but if we told people what we were trying to find out, that might influence their responses. So. In terms of our ethics committees for our university research and also for our code of conduct, um, there is a very, very high standard that you need to um, reach in terms of the evidence and the reasoning why you would need to do this. Um, so ethics to committees are particularly tough on this. So you need to say, this is why I can't tell the person exactly what I'm trying to find out. You should still be telling them what's going to happen to them, but you may you may not say exactly what the purpose of the research is. It may, it may be slightly different from what you tell them. Normally you'll be expected to tell them afterwards. So you'll say, well, in fact, I wasn't trying to find out about your favourite colour. I wanted to find out whether uh, people lie or not. And if you told them up front that it was a study about whether people lie or not, then that was, would be more than likely influencing their behaviour. Okay, so the last area uh, where ethics uh, should be a very important consideration is in our analysis and reporting. So when we're actually writing up results, we've done a survey and we're saying here's what we found out. Uh, some of the important ethical practices are firstly to report your mistakes. So if you happen to have maybe you made a little bit of a mistake somewhere in amongst what you've done, uh, you should certainly not be trying to hide it and cover it up. Uh, the consequences of doing that, both from an ethical point of view and from a professional point of view, the consequences of trying to cover something up and then being found are far, far greater uh, than being honest about any, any mistakes or problems that may have occurred. Uh, you should be very honest about any defects in terms of how you did your sampling, research design, uh, maybe you asked a question and you left a, uh, left a category out, something like that. Sometimes you may have negative findings or unexpected results that you have to report. Uh, this can be particularly challenging. You might be working for a client and you may have to go back to the client and say, well, we surveyed 
your customers and they hate your product and this is going to be quite hard for not only for your company but for you personally to front up to a presentation and tell a client uh, some bad news so it can be quite a challenge but in, from an ethical point of view very important that you are, are being honest with what you're finding in your results okay so that's it for this video uh, do make sure you go and have a little look around the uh, market and social research society website you find there's quite a lot of information there and whether you you see your future in market or social research i think there is some interesting things on that site that will be relevant to you this has been a swinburne production Thank you.